UN Charter was drawn up at a conference in San Francisco in the spring of 1945 and was ratified by 51 nations on and June 26 of the same year. My honor and my privilege in the chair to call for a vote on the approval of the Charter of the United Nations. On October 24, the UN Charter took effect and this day, United Nations Day, is an official flag-flying day for all member nations. The Norwegian Trygve Lee was elected the UN's first Secretary-General. The Security Council, the General Assembly and the Secretariat handle cases involving the UN's peacekeeping duties. Right of veto means that no important resolutions can be passed if one of these five countries votes against or vetoes. A total of 15 countries are represented in the Security Council. Good morning. The 3,046th meeting of the Security Council is now called to order. Norway became a member of the UN on November 16, 1945. Norway is committed to organizing and training a Norwegian military UN standby force. One condition is that the force consists of volunteers. They can be called out at short notice to serve in a UN operation anywhere in the world. During the last 50 years, a total of 45,000 Norwegians have actively participated in the process to create peace. UNSCOB became the UN's first observer force. In 1946, civil war broke out in Greece. With infiltration from Yugoslavia, Albania and Bulgaria, the possibility of a greater conflict developing was great. Therefore, the UN established UNSCOB in 1947. UNSCOB was brought to a close in 1951, once the situation had stabilized. On May 14, 1948, the British mandate for Palestine expired and the Jews established the State of Israel. Full war broke out in the area because the surrounding Arab nations did not approve of the partitioning of Palestine as drawn up by the UN. Count Volker Banadotter of Sweden was sent as a mediator and UNSO was established. Conflicts continued despite the agreement. On five occasions, new wars broke out between Israel and one or more of the Arab nations. Norway joined UNSO in 1956. The headquarters are in Jerusalem, and Norway has officers stationed there and in five surrounding countries. Well, I'm going to go 
The states of India and Pakistan were established in August of 1947 after Great Britain relinquished its dominance on the Indian subcontinent. Many principalities were to be divided between the new states and the Prince of Jumu and Kashmir chose to join India. War broke out and India referred the case to the Security Council in January 1948. A truce was arranged and Unmogip was established in 1949. Norway joined the same year. Their mission was to monitor an 800 kilometre long ceasefire line. Norwegian military participation was concluded in 1994. Korea had been a Japanese possession since 1910. After the Japanese surrendered in 1945, the Soviet Union occupied Korea north of the 38th parallel and the USA south. In June 1950, North Korea invaded South Korea and the UN Security Council passed a resolution to utilize military force. At this time, the Soviet Union was boycotting the Security Council and therefore did not veto the resolution. The Korean War had begun. The USA implemented the resolution by sending military forces to South Korea. In February 1951, Norway passed a resolution to send a field hospital, Normash. This hospital was in Korea until 1954. The Korean War ended by dividing the country at the 38th parallel. In October 1956, British and French forces launched a strike against Egypt after President Nasser had nationalized the Suez Canal. They feared Egypt would restrict free passage. At the same time, Israel attacked Egyptian forces in the Sinai Desert. The issue was raised in the UN, but England and France vetoed the sending in of UN forces. The General Assembly, however, demanded a ceasefire. A UN force was on location in the middle of November 1956 to monitor the ceasefire line the two sides had agreed upon. Norway sent a rifle company early on, which, along with a Danish company, became the Danor Battalion. The battalion was to assist the French and British troops in Port Said during the withdrawal. Somewhat later, a Norwegian medical company was sent to the area. The Norwegian forces were to monitor the Israeli withdrawal from Sinai. The forces found themselves between Israeli and Egyptian forces all the way to Gaza. The UN force remained in Gaza until 1967. 
Then the situation between Israel and Egypt came to a head. Egypt demanded that the UN force withdraw and UNEF had to evacuate. Civil war broke out in Lebanon in 1958. The UN is not permitted to intervene in internal affairs, but the two sides in the civil war requested external help, both from USA and the United Arab Republic, so the conflict became an international issue. UNOGIL was established, but its mission was not an easy one. The UN observers encountered many difficulties. The US had sent troops to prevent foreign aggression, and this made the situation all the more difficult. The civil war continued until October, when an understanding was reached and the Americans left the country. In the course of November and December, the observers could also withdraw. Congo, or Zaire as the country is now called, was granted independence from Belgium and declared a republic in 1960. Belgium's colonial policy had been inadequate and the Congo was not prepared to govern itself. The army mutinied and the situation was chaotic. Belgium sent troops to help the government maintain order and to protect their own interests. But the country became divided when the region of Katanga declared independence and other regions followed. Since Belgian troops were involved, the UN could intervene. ONUC, which consisted solely of military forces, was established. It was to give the Congolese government military assistance and help create political stability until the government could get organized. Conditions in the Congo were extremely difficult. UN soldiers were accused of abuse of power and were exposed to threats and robberies. In addition, fierce battles were being fought. In 1964, Onuk had to withdraw. The UN's use of force was unfortunate and several of the member nations no longer wished to finance the forces. But the Congo's problems had not been solved. A revolution in Yemen in 1962 threatened to become a larger Arab conflict as Saudi Arabia and Egypt chose separate sides. The UN managed to broker an agreement and a ceasefire zone was established. The mission was put into force in 1963. The mandate was limited to monitoring that no material, weapons or personnel were smuggled into the warring parties. The climate proved too tough and no solution was found. Conditions in the Middle East have been unstable and border wars have been common. In 1975, civil war broke out in Lebanon and the different groups battled fiercely. Syrian forces intervened in 1976 and Israel threatened to invade. Guerrillas attacked Israeli targets and many Israelis were killed. Israel invaded Lebanon in March 1978 and this was taken as a threat to world peace. 
the UN was called in and Unifil was established on March 19. The mandate was to monitor Israeli withdrawal, restore peace, and assist the Lebanese government in maintaining calm and order. Within a couple of months, the Norwegian contingent was expanded to include a maintenance company, a medical company, and a helicopter wing. Approximately 25,000 Norwegians have participated in Unifil since the beginning. In September 1978, Egypt and Israel signed the famous Camp David Accords. For this, Egyptian President Anwar el-Sadat and Israeli Prime Minister Menachem Begin received the Nobel Peace Prize. In spite of the Accords, conditions in Lebanon did not improve. In addition to the international conflict, there were violent internal conflicts. In 1982, Israel again invaded Lebanon, north to the capital, Beirut. The Israeli forces did not withdraw until 1985, but have since occupied the southernmost portion of the country. This is where Unifil has forces stationed today. Unifil remains in southern Lebanon, but hope of a peace agreement in the Middle East can lead to a reduction or withdrawal of UN forces. In December 1988, the UN received a request from Angola and Cuba concerning the withdrawal of Cuban forces from Angola. The Security Council established an observer force the mandate was to make sure that the agreement between the two nations was adhered to. The UN mission began in January 1989 and ended in July 1991. UNIVEM II was established in July 1991. They were to monitor the truce between the government and the guerrilla organization UNITA, observe the reorganization of government troops, and assist Angola in its transfer to democratic rule. The UN's observer force has varied in size since 1988. The ceasefire accord is constantly violated and no solution has been found. On August 20, 1988, a ceasefire took effect between Iran and Iraq. The UN's General Assembly passed a resolution to send an observer force to monitor the peace agreement. The observers were to make sure no position shifted along the front between the two countries. The Norwegian observers were well received and operated on the Iraqi side. Iraq's invasion of Kuwait led to Iraq accepting the so-called Algeria Agreement of 1975, which set the boundaries between Iran and Iraq. The UN disbanded UNIMOG in March 1991, and the UN's mission has been characterized as a success.
Iraq invaded Kuwait in 1990 and the UN immediately implemented trade sanctions. After Operation Desert Storm and Iraq's defeat, the UN in April 1991 established UNICOM. The mandate is to monitor a demilitarized zone along the internationally recognized border between the two countries. The zone stretches 10 kilometers into Iraq and 5 kilometers into Kuwait. The observers are to report any illegal trespassing and record any hostile actions. Norway participated with observers and personnel for a field hospital, but withdrew in 1994. Somalia was suffering from a civil war and international aid organizations had problems getting supplies to the starving citizens. The UN sent an observer force, supported by a Pakistani infantry battalion, UNOSOM, to monitor the ceasefire and safeguard delivery of humanitarian aid. The Norwegians participated in an administrative unit at headquarters in Mogadishu until 1994. The mission was to disarm the warring factions and to use all means necessary to make it safe for the humanitarian aid organizations. It was meant as a short-term special force, so in May 1994, UNOSOM II took command over a peacekeeping operation with over 18,000 UN troops. In 1994, Norway withdrew from a difficult mission. UNOSOM was terminated in 1995. Yugoslavia ceased to exist when Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Serbia and Montenegro and Macedonia seceded from the Federation in 1990-92. War broke out between Serbia and Croatia and the UN decided to send UN troops to protect the weapon-free zones and supply routes for the starving citizens. <laughs> Norway participated with the unit that organized the UN's transportation units in Croatia, with personnel at headquarters in Zagreb, and with observers who reported from the Serb-occupied areas in Croatia. So, the situation on that side is, uh, is calm and quiet. We, uh, we heard from the liaison officer that there are some activities in this, uh, in this area opposite uh, Kupa Kupa, the river in east side, up on uh, this side. After war broke out in Bosnia, the UN also placed troops in Sarajevo to keep the airport open for supplies. In May 1993, the UN declared so-called safe areas in certain parts of Bosnia. Norway has one battalion in Bosnia, whose primary mission is to bring supplies to the UN forces. There is a medical company which runs the field hospital in Tusla. An engineering troop maintains and builds roads. In addition, there are four helicopters which support the medical services and fly personnel in and out of the area. Macedonia asked the UN to monitor and secure its borders towards neighboring Albania and Serbia. 
Patrulje. Remont. Det er vel den vanlige. Norway has participated in Macedonia since the beginning in February 1993, but cut back on its troops in 1994. Norwegian soldiers and officers have participated in many larger UN operations. The services have varied from monotonous routines to missions that have been both demanding and dangerous. In addition, Norwegian pilots have flown UN missions in the Air Force Hercules transport aircraft to several of the world's conflict centers. The Coast Guard ship Undernes has sailed as a support vessel in the Persian Gulf, and frigates from the Navy have controlled shipping to former Yugoslavia in the Adriatic Sea. 45,000 Norwegians have served to create peace. <laughs> 